Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in five minutes from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your five-minute time check, stations. Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in two minutes from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your two minute time check stations. Attention stations on the network. Our broadcast will begin in one minute from my mark. In five, four, three, two, one, mark. That was your one minute time check stations.
on the Hawkeye Sports Network. From Learfield, Hawkeye Baseball is on the air. Hawkeye Baseball is brought to you by High V. Score big savings with the new High V Perks membership. University of Iowa Healthcare. Changing medicine, changing lives. Oak No Retirement Community. Homewood Suites and Home 2. Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all sweet hotels. Iowa Corn. You might think Iowa just grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. Brought to you by Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. Also brought to you by Mediacom, home of extreme and one gig internet speeds. Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Travel Leaders, Destinations Unlimited, the official travel partner of the Hawkeyes. And by Bud and Mary's. There's no THC cap on Iowa medical cannabis, and getting a card is fast and easy online. Get your medical card today. Visit BudMary.com. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. From the campus of the University of Iowa, it's baseball time in Iowa City. Live from Dwayne Banks Field, it's a midweek matchup between the Grandview Vikings and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Welcome to the broadcast booth alongside my fine color analyst, John Evans. I'm John Leo. Well, it's the final midweek before conference play with Grandview in town this afternoon. The Vikings are 11-10 and 10 on the early season. As a team, they bat 343 with 42 home runs. Coach Heller noting the Vikings' offensive prowess this afternoon. The Hawkeyes on the flip side, they enter following a three-game sweep of Western Illinois, all via an eight-inning run rule. The Hawkeyes' bullpen showed vast improvement, and the offense capitalized on opportunities with two out hitting and brought home runners that were in scoring position. Iowa improved to 10-9 and nine with the series of victories. Today it's the final midweek tune-up before conference play. It's Grandview in Iowa, the Vikings and the Hawkeyes from Dwayne Banks Field this afternoon on the campus of the University of Iowa. First pitch coming in just a bit. Let's relive some of the highlights from last weekend. It started with a, a singular game and an 11-1 victory for the Hawkeyes on Friday afternoon. One out, Seegers at third. Here's Peterson swinging at the first pitch, drives it deep to left. It is over the left fielder's head and to the wall. Peterson around first. He's at second with an RBI stand-up double. The Hawks have the lead. It's 2-1. to one. one ball, two strikes. The pitch, ground ball, left side. Seegers, backhand stop, throw to second for one. On to first, double play. How about that? Jack Young, you bet. He gets out of the jam in a great 6-4-3 double play. Huxdorf drives this to left, carrying well, and it'll move the left fielder back. One hop off the wall. One run is in. That's Peterson. It's an RBI double for Huxdorf, jumping on the first pitch. 5-1 Hawks. A one. Mitchell shoots it into left field, base hit. Tello will score. They're going to wave another run. Here comes Huck around third. The throw is up the line at third base. Two RBI single. Gable Mitchell, and it's 7-1. to Mitchell drives this into the gap in right center. It is down for a base hit. One run is in. That's all it took. And the Hawkeyes win it 11-1. to Due to the poor weather conditions on Sunday, Iowa was forced to play a doubleheader on Saturday. The Hawks won them both, 17-7 and 19-9. 3-1, Cop hits it in the air to right. Get going, baby. It's a no-doubter. Davis, the deputy cop, strikes again. Hawks lead it 12-9. Yes! Long pause from Volker, the one-two, chopped right back to him. He gloves it, he'll throw to second base for one. Over to first, double play, one, six, three. Three, one, Cop hits it in the air to right. Get going, baby, it's a no. No doubter, Davis, the deputy cop, strikes again. Hawks lead it, 12-9, yes. Two, one. Michael hits it in the air to left center field. It's carrying well, and it is down. 
down to the base of the wall. Here comes one. Here comes two. They're waving swales. He loses his lid. Here's the play at the plate. Save. Three runs come home. Bases clearing. Double Michael Seegers. It's 18-9. to nine. Blooped into center field for Mulfler. It's down for a base hit. Here comes Petey. He'll score, and Will Mulfler ends the game. 19 to 9. The Hawkeyes win it. Three game sweep of Western Illinois in the books, and now a midweek before the Hawkeyes hit the road and travel to Purdue this weekend. Iowa and Grandview coming up in just a little bit. We'll take a break. When we come back, John talks with head equipment manager Dan Hubbard right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Just add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for $1, then enter it in the VIP club, and you could win tickets to the sold-out NASCAR race or other exclusive race weekend prizes. Feel the power of NASCAR and double play today. Woohoo! See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. Hi, it's your friend, social media. You know where I showcase the cool life of sports stars and friends. But don't fall for the editing and good lighting, because we all have struggles and challenges, like with alcohol or drug use, gambling, or our mental health. You know, talking about it is a sign of strength. Maybe you don't know who to talk to? Your Life Iowa can give you resources or treatment options. Get free 24-7 confidential support. Call, text, or chat online at yourlifeiowa.org. A message from Iowa HHS. Have you heard about this new type of television experience from Epson? It's called the Epic Vision Ultra Laser Projection TV. It combines a new type of laser projection technology along with a unique Epson Silverflex screen to produce an epic 120-inch 4K Pro UHD picture that's up to four times bigger than a traditional 60-inch TV. There's no better way to watch live sports and watching Iowa basketball play live on this big bright TV is simply awesome. If you're a sports fanatic like me, you need to check this new Epson TV out for yourself. Visit epson.com slash TV to learn more. If you've got the right tools and the friendly people at U.S. Bank in your corner, making smarter money choices is a piece of cake. If only our tools and helpful advisors could have helped you avoid some of those not-so-smart choices in life. Like that time you tried to pick up unicycling. Whoa, whoa, whoa coming through! Yeah. Or when you thought it'd be okay to pet that squirrel in the park. Good squirrel. Good squirrel. <laughs> While we can't help you with all that, we can help you bank smartly at usbank.com slash smarter together. Member FDIC. Welcome back to Hawkeye Pregame. I'm here today with Dan Hubbard, Hawkeye Equipment Manager. Dan, thanks for joining me. Yeah, no problem. So, you know, look, we were talking about the, there's so much stuff that goes on behind the scenes that actually get the team ready to play. Um, what, is, what is a what is a pregame look like for, for you trying to get the team ready? Uh, pregame, we usually get here kind of early and uh, make sure everybody has their stuff and, uh, you know, from hats to pants to belts to shoes, all the good stuff. Make sure, you know, Rick and those guys have all their stuff as well. Um, and then it's really just sitting and waiting in case, uh, you know, kind of oddball stuff happens. Uh, it's more of a reactive approach, but it, it, honestly, if you're good on the front end, you really don't have to worry about the back end as too much. But it's more when uh, when guys want to change the look, or you know, if somebody wants to wear short pants, or you know, uh, you know, just switch things up to get the groove back. So, so guys, normally short pants and, and long socks, and then this time he's going to go long pants. He yep. comes yeah. down and swaps. <laughs> yep. How many times do guys? Uh, the guys. How many times do they forget? And hey, that was that's been in my bag since the trip. What? Do, how do we? You don't see that too much. Uh, the, one time there was a pitcher. I'm not going to name any names, but uh, they switched their hat out probably four, four or five times. So uh, it was pretty funny. Uh, the, the second time it was annoying, but like the fourth or fifth, it was actually kind of funny. But there was a reason behind it. So what, uh, so like when, when Iowa hosts a team, like Western Illinois this weekend, yeah. Iowa hosted for the weekend series, you know, or Iowa's going on the road this weekend to Purdue, how do you help the other, how do you help the visiting team keep all their stuff in order then too? Uh, it, it really just depends on the team. Uh, some schools, uh, this past weekend, we didn't really do too much for Western Illinois. Uh, but if if they would have called, we would have, you know, we would have had everything ready and uh 
it kind of just adds a little bit more time into our work night, but we're doing it anyway, so we're more than happy to help, you know, visiting teams. And then likewise, when we go on the road, we kind of just coordinate with the visiting team if we need something or, like, if an emergency happens, uh, uh, like, this or a couple weeks ago when they were in Jacksonville, Florida, we had to call, you know, their, their clubby down there to get some stuff done or get some buttons fixed. So it, it in our back back of the house type stuff, everybody kind of helps everybody, so. So the geeky stuff in me, you know, as you guys have kind of told me some of the stories, how big are these washing machines that, that get all this stuff done? Uh, I mean, the, the main one we use is uh, probably about 85 pounds. So, uh, but I mean, there's bigger ones, there's 100 pounders. And, you know, we have, in some of the equipment rooms here on the university, we have even some of the household washers. So it varies uh, depending on what you need done. So I know you did football at UConn. What what other what other what other sports do you take care of, or who, what other teams do you keep on track right now? Um, so right now at Iowa, I take care of obviously baseball and the two golfs and women's tennis. And then there's not tons of you, so you do kind of help over yeah, yeah, some yeah. other stuff wherever yeah, we, you need we'll to. We'll help out whenever we need to if uh, if somebody needs something in another equipment room, or you know, every different. Uh, you know, student athlete needs help. We're we're more than willing to help them. So, are the are the are the big sports harder to handle, or the smaller ones? Do they have their own challenges too? Yeah, I, obviously, uh, I, I don't know. The phrase is bigger is better, but um, you know, <laughs> there's something to be said about you know a smaller, close knit uh, team, and uh, you know, sometimes it can you can get almost too technical sometimes with the smaller things, but it you know it, they both have really good pros and cons i'm a i'm a golf geek so i know when you when you've ordered that when you've ordered the golf equipment i've kind of been watching over your shoulder there so is there anything um you know what's kind of you know how many how many uniforms do i mean obviously everybody sees there you know there's white gold black tops you know you and i were just talking before we started the the interview about how many hats i mean how many different uh basic combos do the guys wear I mean, uh, I mean coach rick is pretty specific on what we wear home and away but i mean we do have a a, a pretty substantial uniform combination rotation if you actually sat down and kind of did it all i haven't figured out the actual number but it's it's pretty significant so especially with the hats are all the specialty things you know, like whether it's sleeves whether it's you know some sort of warming gear anything like, as all that you handle all that then too right yep yep so uh, obviously we handle all of all of the apparel and all of the accessories so um if a guy comes and asks for a sleeve you know we'll work with him and you know as long as he's not asking for four or five of them it's pretty it's pretty good also we work with jake if jake comes and tells us hey um if uh you know, if a guy needs something tighter or loose for whatever ailment he might have, uh, we work with that too. Sure. All right. So not to, I'll put you on the spot, and you can punt it if you want. All right. Without naming names, best best equipment story you got? Best equipment story I have. Um, ooh, I'm trying to think. <laughs> Somebody lose something, somebody, uh, or, or emergency pickup where you, you, you had to come in the... Uh... Not naming names. Uh, we were doing, I was doing, I was dropping off visiting laundry uh, last year, and a, <laughs> uh, I was downtown, uh, and I noticed, it was pouring rain, I noticed two guys uh, were walking in the rain from the visiting team, and I was like, oh my goodness, Like I, they probably need a ride, so I, I stopped and Ask the guys, hey, you know, I'm dropping off your laundry right now. Uh, do you guys need a ride back? And they were like, oh, please. So <laughs> it was actually kind of funny. Save the day that yeah. way. Perfect. All right, I'll let you go. I appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, no problem. Dan Hubbard from the Hawkeye Equipment Room. We'll be right back with more Hawkeye pregame. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Burger Shed is a burger lover's dream come true. Our handcrafted burgers are made with a signature blend of certified Angus beef and smoky brisket, served with house-made pickles. But if you're looking for something other than a burger, don't you worry. We've got that, too. Check out our wide variety of shed sandwiches, salads, and real ice cream shakes. Burgers, beers, and a bunch of BS. Burger Shed, Bass Pro Drive in Altoona. Around here, Jack Frost nips more than just your nose. That's why the Midwest gets Honda. Dependable, all-wheel drive, 
with heated steering wheel and seats to keep Jack Frost off your seat, nice. which will make it very happy. And since it's no fun to gas up in this weather, isn't it cool that Honda has such legendary fuel efficiency? New Hondas are arriving, but so is Mr. Frost. So see your Central Midwest Honda dealer. Honda gets the Midwest. If you guessed that was the sound of a bag of Pioneer brand A-Series soybeans, you guessed right. Well, kinda. It was really the sound of an innovative team that spent decades perfecting a seed with exclusive genetics and the ultimate agronomic advantage. The sort of breeders who don't rest until they've achieved outstanding performance. Pioneer brand A-Series soybeans. Number one for a reason. Visit pioneer.com slash genetics. American Equity salutes today's hero of the game. As a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye Games this season, please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. Welcome back to pregame coverage of Iowa Hawkeye Baseball today. A midweek with Grandview before the Hawkeyes open conference play this e weekend. We're joined by head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller. Coach, a, a three-game sweep of Western Illinois all by the run rule, but uh, certainly exciting could be a way to, to go about that. Well, it was definitely um, it was definitely what the doctor ordered for our, for our team. Um, you know, it wasn't easy, um, especially in... Especially in uh, Game Three, the second game of the doubleheader, you know, we fell behind, you know, five runs in the sixth inning, and and then to, uh, to get an answer back with, I think, what we scored eight in the in the bottom half of the sixth, and then followed that up with another six in the in, in the seventh, and um, just really really pleased that of how our guys approached um, all three games. I mean, it was. A base, it was basically a whatever it takes mentality, you know. Just we got to do what we got to do. If we have to outscore them, we outscore them. You know, whatever. Um, we're going to cover guys up if something something happens that, that wasn't good. And there was a, a couple blips uh, in each one of those games that that needed to be uh, covered up. And 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 on the, this weekend we were able to do that. And uh, the hitters did a phenomenal job. You know, we scored. A bunch of runs this weekend, and just great at bat after great at bat, and not conceding and not chasing and taking advantage. And on the, this weekend, we were able to do that, and uh, the hitters did a phenomenal job. You know, we scored a bunch of runs this weekend, and just great at bat after great at bat, and not conceding and not chasing and taking advantage of the free bases, especially in the second half of all those games. Uh, we were able to do that, and 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 then also step up and get the big blow and you know, like Raider Tell had a phenomenal weekend I mean you don't have nine hits in one day very often yeah. and you'll see that and, uh, you know Davis Cobb had a big weekend with a whole bunch of RBIs and home runs and you know, just a lot of guys uh, got it done up and down the lineup with the bat and, you know also uh, defensively there were some some really good plays on the infield some double plays that I think we turned five maybe we turned five double plays on the weekend and uh, all of them needed and yeah the pitching uh, really cut the free bases down um, overall but also uh, the the bullpen guys um, the bullpen guys really stepped up this week and, and and limited the free bases and that was great to see and just seeing guys out there uh, more confident um, with their best focus and their best intent but also comfortable and that's what you're striving to get to where uh, there's no discomfort there's no discomfort you're up there you're you're totally comfortable in whatever the situation is and you just compete and that's uh, that's where we need to get everybody before um, uh, before we turn into what I think uh, you know this team could be uh, and that's something that you mentioned uh, I think of the first game the, the pregame interview we did was just getting everybody on that same page believing just going up there and throwing it and with the bullpen guys that was that was truly the case uh, two free bases in the in the entire weekend I believe or the, at least the at least the double header yeah. against Western Illinois they were really sharp but I'd highlight a couple of the individuals from the bullpen that you were pleased with well Jack Young has been really doing a nice job for us and he gets put in the worst situations and uh, he's worked out of a couple bases loaded, nobody out jams, and um, I just think Jack is is feeling great right now. I mean, he, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, when he came back the second time, 
Um, had a little blip, but but overall, Jack's been great. Um, you know, Chaz Wheely has, has been really solid lately. Um, Gannon Archer's coming back around. He's been really solid. Uh, all those guys, um, you know, have, have been just just really good lately and going to get them all back out there today, plus a couple guys that, that didn't get out there. Uh, Reese Buter um, was sick this weekend, had to go home with a fever on, on Friday and didn't didn't get in the game. So I'm anxious to see, see Reese throw today. And uh, his last outing was was uh, very uh, optimistic and, and we need to get him back into the mix um, you know to get this going um, you know Anthony Watts wasn't out there it, you know he's going to start today we need, we need to count on Anthony to, to throw strikes and pound the zone uh, you know Caleb Strack didn't get out there and Caleb's been um, I think pitching really well he also a guy that gets thrown into some jams mm-hmm. um, you know it's just uh, we got to get Sam Hart back out there and uh, we're gonna and Aaron Savory, Aaron Savory um, threw threw well again for us, and uh, Aaron's been a mainstay, a guy that has really helped um, kind of bring us back out of where that the dark place we were. Uh, and Aaron's been a big part of taking us taking us out of that. And, uh, you know, all those guys will, will see some innings, and then I was really uh, impressed with Ben Dete. Mm-hmm. Um, it was looked like a different guy, and um, that's the guy we need. The guy that we saw this weekend. Is the guy that we need to see, uh, and, and, and if that's the case, you know he's going to be able to really help us um, the rest of the season on the weekends. Head coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Heller, on our pregame show from Banks this afternoon. You mentioned Anthony Watts; he gets the start today. He's sort of one of those middle relievers that that you might need on the weekends to eat up some innings after the starter's done. Is that right, coach? Yeah, that's what we you know we were hoping that you know, that that Anthony could come in and and get us three, possibly four innings and. Uh, unfortunately, it's been more in the the, the, the really good one, and then um, you know it got progressively uh, less effective. And then we just we just got to get him back on track because uh, his stuff is is really you know it got progressively uh, less effective. And then we just we just got to get him back on track because uh, his stuff is is really good. I mean, he has great stuff, uh, but but. Um, and guys don't hit him all that much. He yeah. just he just has to stop beating himself, and uh, he's certainly capable. Um, but right now, you know, uh, we'll take inning here, inning there, if that's what we have to do to get guys back on track, and then start start working towards maybe two or three innings. Um, as you know, because there's definitely guys in that group that are capable of doing that uh, for sure. But uh, for whatever reason, right now it's it's more in the one inning range. Uh, the opponent today is Grandview. Uh, what do we know about the Vikings, Coach? Um, a team that really swings the bat. They've hit a bunch of home runs. Um, kind of the Lou, Lou Yasinich tradition that, that Coach Brinker uh, uh, and Coach Hohen took took over. And, um, you know, they've got some, some older guys this year, and they're swinging the bats uh, really well. Um, you know, we're going to see probably six pitchers or so I would guess um, you know maybe a few less than what we're going to throw but um, they're going to run several guys out there to get ready for their conference weekend as well and, uh, you know Grandview is a team that um, is definitely capable of beating you if uh, you don't play well there they have good players and like I said today's a we haven't talked a lot about it but today had nothing changes you know the wind is just howling I mean you know, gusts over 35 and straight in from left field and, and the same win we had this weekend a good chunk of the weekend where it was blowing towards the right field foul pole so the, the right-handed hitters haven't had a friendly wind in a long long time I think we're going on 12 games where the wind's been blowing right in the, in the pull side right-handers face but we can go back to last year too coach yeah, it's been hard the whole time yeah it's 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 um uh, it's the way it blows here a lot of times in the spring unless we're we're getting warm weather and uh we had to move this game uh to today because uh, tomorrow it looks like you know tonight cold front's coming in and it's not going to be very it's not going to be very nice uh, you know the rest of the week and even into next week it's looking bad and uh, it's not going to be great at Purdue and we're going to end up having to play in some windy cold cold weather down there. I will so certainly be uh, prepared with all of uh, the team's experiences at this point. Some of these, one of these times, Coach, I'm going to get that segment sponsored by some some uh, weather company or something to get the wind <laughs> report uh, of the day. All right, Coach, before we let you go today, uh, just some keys to victory to take down the Vikings. Well, you know, you know, like on, like in all of our midweek games, it only takes one blip and, and then somebody's trying to bail you out. And it's a short leash for most of the guys uh, that go out there and the challenge is 
uh, for them is to go out and get his three outs, get his three outs, get his three outs, just do your one ninth, and and then uh, offensively is to try to offensively is to try to um, you know repeat what we did this weekend, just grind out at bats after at bats. You know when you're able to score a large number of runs like we did, uh, it's it's not guys up there trying to to do it all themselves. You know, take your walk, take your hit by pitch. You know, do whatever you have to do to get on base and then somebody will step up and get the big hit and, and that's what we did all weekend and uh, that's what I'd love to see us do today uh, against Grandview is, is just grind at bats out quality at bat for quality at bat and, um, you know when we do get a pitch to hammer the, you know be on the barrel and, um, and, and always as always you know we need to play good defense um, the outfield defense is particularly important on days like today and we saw that this weekend with a couple a couple miscues that that could have been costly, but we, we scored enough runs to cover them up. Um, and communication out there with the infielders going after balls, it's its a challenge. You know, there's no question when the wind blows like this, but that's thats what it's going to take today. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. Good luck today. Thanks, John. Head Coach of the Hawkeyes, Rick Keller, on our pregame show from Banks this afternoon. Moments away from first pitch, Iowa and Grandview. Coming up right after this, this is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Around here, Jack Frost nips more than just your nose. That's why the Midwest gets Honda. Dependable, all-wheel drive, with heated steering wheel and seats to keep Jack Frost off your seat. Which will make it very happy. And since it's no fun to gas up in this weather, isn't it cool that Honda has such legendary fuel efficiency? New Hondas are arriving, but so is Mr. Frost. So see your Central Midwest Honda dear. Honda gets the Midwest. Even the simplest act can set a chain of good in motion. Like choosing Delta Dental of Iowa for your dental and vision insurance. Because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you make a difference for others. Visit SharingHealthySmiles.com and choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. John Evans and John Leo on the campus of the University of Iowa this afternoon at Dwayne Banks Field. Welcome back to the broadcast booth. Starting lineup being announced as we speak, Grandview and Iowa for the final midweek contest before conference play starts up this weekend for the Hawkeyes. Before we dive deeper into this matchup and give you today's starting lineups, so let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. 10 seconds station ID. This is Iowa Hawkeye Baseball. All right, John Evans, we are here at Banks a day early. Game was supposed to be tomorrow, but uh, gets moved to today because this is going to be better weather than what we're expecting uh, tomorrow by a long shot. They, well, okay, which which is 100% true based on the forecast, and it's uh, it's less than perfect now. But I was just I was, I was just kind of watching it when Grandview starting lineup was announced. They went to the third baseline. I was staying underneath the heater. Yes. <laughs> They're not coming out. It's an interesting, uh, interesting dynamic. I haven't seen a visiting team do that yet. Sunny day, warm on temperature alone at uh, about 60 degrees, but due to the wind coming from the north, it is plummeting the temperatures and making things a little bit unpleasant here today. But it, it looks better than uh, overcast skies and, and things along those lines. So we'll manage with this today. Guess where the wind's blowing out to today, John? It's headed out to right. Reese Moore, uh, Reese Moore should enjoy today's, uh, or more so than maybe the, the other hitters, he's got an opportunity to enjoy it a little bit with uh, kind of blowing out right to that right field foul pole. And obviously we saw that this weekend where um, some little pop flies that uh, – didn't look like they had enough juice carried over by quite a ways and, and balls out to left and left center uh, really take turns. They go, they either start coming back to the infield or they, they hook over towards center. I suspect uh, most of the fans in attendance today will sit on the right side in the sun uh, of the stadium today. All right, we'll, we will uh, step aside for today's national anthem. We're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. 
Hi, I'm Gary Dolphin, and if you want your home to be exceptionally comfortable during these cold Iowa winters and hot, humid summers, you need to turn to Dave Lennox and your local Lennox Home Comfort Specialist. Lennox has been serving Iowa consumers since 1895, when Dave Lennox built his first furnace in Marshalltown, and Lennox is still building its high-efficiency furnaces and air conditioners there today. For the best home comfort system you can buy, it's Lennox and your local Lennox dealer. Lennox and the Hawkeyes. Now there's a winning combination. A bag of corn is, well, a bag of corn. Unless it's a bag of Pioneer brand chrome seed corn. Then you're dealing with the most optimized yield potential, agronomic performance, and insect protection the Pioneer lineup has to offer. A bag that will make life easier for you. Eight bushels per acre easier. And much harder for rootworms in the competition. Pioneer brand chrome products. Field proven and ready for yours. Visit pioneer.com slash plant chrome. the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of and the home of the brave. All right, the national anthem has concluded. At Dwayne Banks this afternoon, had a moment of silence beforehand uh, to honor the, the life of former University of Iowa pitcher Jim McAndrew, who passed away on March 14th. Uh, he was 80 years old. He pitched for the Hawkeyes from 1962 to 1965, was a letter winner in 63 and 65. He had a 4-4 four and four record as a senior. So uh, our condolences to the McAndrew family. World Series champion in 69. Yeah, the, they're called the Miracle Mets, huh? All right, the New York Miracle Mets, uh, as, as John mentioned. All right, the Hawkeyes about to take the field. Let's go over today's starting lineups. We'll go with the visitors first. Uh, the Grandview Vikings with an 11 and 10 record under the direction of head coach Doug Brinker in his second season. The Vikings will be led off by Brock Johnson, followed by Brock Reinhardt. A couple of Brocks to lead things off for Grandview. Nolan Drill is the DH batting third. Eric Brokemeyer in the cleanup spot batting fourth. Hank Hemrich. Brooke Heinen uh, in the middle of the order, five and six, seven, eight, nine, Carson Waddle, Connor Canny, and Dane Schwartz will round out the batting order for the Vikings today. The Hawkeyes defensively the Hawkeyes. as they take the field from left to right on the infield. Raider Tello, Michael Seegers, Gable Mitchell, and Davis Kopp getting the start at first base today for Iowa. Behind the plate doing the catching is Reese Moore. In the outfield left to right, Sam Peterson, Kyle Huxdorf, Andy Nelson in right. The starting pitcher for today's midweek is the right-hander, the transfer from Creighton. He's a sophomore from Clive. Iowa turns to Anthony Watts. Anthony's made six appearances on the season with a 540 ERA, does have a save, 13 in the third innings, nine hits, eight runs have all been earned, 14 walks. strikeouts. Opponents just hitting 188. So again, you've heard it a lot when you talk about the Iowa pitching. The, the important thing for Anthony is you know, get ahead, throw strikes, uh, make the other team swing the bat. You're going to see a fastball that's in the low to mid 90s. You see a good changeup and a good slider. So uh, strong array of pitches from, from Wadi. Just uh, uh, you know, as he continues to refine his control and command, 
His first time was kind of what he mentioned, the three and a third innings uh, shut down baseball there when he when he relieved Marcus Morgan. Hasn't had quite that same success since, but obviously, you know, it's in there now. Right. And the thing that we've talked about a couple times, John, regarding Watts is how easy he does.
close stance in the box for Hemrick. The 1-1. Swing and a miss. Good cut. Archer threw it by him. Hemrick bats 316. Second on the team in home runs with eight. So watch out for him being the left-handed hitter with the, the wind favoring his power over to right. Archer is ready. Here comes the one-two. Swing and a miss. Got him with the breaking ball. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of really good averages on the on the Grandview team. So I mean at their level, uh, I mean there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys hitting three eleven or higher. So as Coach Heller mentioned, they can swing the bat. So it's not that uh, it's not that you're going to be able to throw a bunch of get me over stuff and and think it's going to work out okay. You're going to have to make quality pitches. Powerful team. They slug six eighteen. Archer deals in the dirt. Good block by Reese Moore behind the plate. Forty seven doubles, which is ten more than they've allowed. Forty two home runs, which is sixteen more than they've allowed. So certainly a lot of power for Grandview. Batter is Brooke Heinen. Off the end of the bat, hits it foul down the first baseline. Heinen's got three home runs, six doubles. Also batting in the 300s at 321. Yeah, even for that, you know, 126 walks and hit by pitches to 153 strikeouts. So a team that does an okay job of putting it in play again at their level. One ball, one strike. Archer out of the windup, the pitch. Swing and a miss. Got him with the high heater. And it's one and two. Boy, that's got to be tough to see uh, the movement on Archer's pitches because he's going to go with the straight fastball or the breaking ball, and it's all going to come from the same spot. Right, and it, it's coming up high and and getting dropped dropped right in there with how it breaks. Here's a one-two in the air to right center field. Huxdorf moving back, still running. Nelson is there as well. That one is off of Huxdorf's glove and off of the wall. Heinen's moving around second, headed for third. And he'll be in with a triple with two outs. On a high fly ball to right center with an assist from the wind, John. Well, that's a it's a one-two pitch left right in the middle of the zone. And that's kind of the 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 downside to that. Like I was just mentioning, you know, they're good enough hitters that especially with two strikes, they're gonna be looking to protect. And you put a you put a ball in the middle of the plate, uh, they can really get a good swing off on that. Just mentioning the, the arm slot for Archer. I mean, if that one comes in as a breaking ball, there's no chance that Heinen touches it, but instead it's a straight fastball that gets hit out to right center. Archer starts with strike one for Carson Waddle. You know, and all part of the things that, that Arch is going to have to learn of, of, you know, how to get guys out. Yeah, finish the deal, right? A one pitch. In the dirt, gets through Reese Moore's legs all the way to the backstop. This will score the run. It's two to one. Not sure. That probably goes as a pass ball there. It looked, it looked catchable. Just maybe handcuffed him, crossed him up a little bit. It was a fast ball. Really, it just kind of looked like down right on, you know, maybe Reese's knee of his shin guard, maybe a little lower and. He's kind of in that awkward spot to catch and, and kind of bled through him. Actually goes as a wild pitch. Mm, tough. 1-1 one, one from Archer. Breaking ball, swing and a miss, 1-2. and two. Yeah, I, I think I'd, I'd side with you on that one, John, uh, just based on the pitch location. Not necessarily in the dirt. I don't think it was. It, our, our, obstruction, our, our view is a little bit obstructed from up here in that regard. Here's the one-two from Archer. Ground ball up the middle. Seegers dives, doesn't matter. It's through into center for a base hit. That was a better one-two pitch. It's down, but still in the middle of the plate. Did a nice job sticking with it and just rolling it right back up the middle. The next batter for the Vikings, right fielder, number 14, Connor Canning. All this with uh, two outs for Grandview. A triple and now a single. They've halved the Iowa lead. It's two to one, top two. Decent lead at first base for Waddle as Archer goes from the stretch. Quick pickoff move over there at first. This is a team that's been really successful on, on the bases. 21 of 23 stolen bases. He has six down there at mm. first base. 
worth keeping an eye on. Here's Connor Canny, right-handed hitter. Archer deals outside, ball one. Ooh, that was not outside. <laughs> Brett Meal didn't like it. But He's I think the it, home plate umpire today. I think it missed where Reese was set up, and we've talked about that a number of times too. It looks outside then because Reese had to go grab it and bring it back. Swing and a miss on the 1-0 pitch. Yeah, the illusion that that creates for the umpire. Yeah, it looks like it's, oh, that must have missed the plate. Well, didn't. It just it missed where he was set up. And Archer is getting a lot of swings and misses, though. I, w I will say that. Check swing in the dirt. Did he go? Uh, first, first, whoa, 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 what's going on here? First base umpire is not looking, and the runner just takes off from first to second. Well, I think we could. I think the Hawks could have picked him off right there. He was just jogging to second base. Yeah, I, I he, <laughs> I've never seen that, John. He may have just had the slowest delayed steal in the history of baseball, and nobody really knew what he did. Home plate umpire pointed to first base for a, an appeal on the swing. First base umpire wasn't even looking. Well, I think and I think they thought it was a balk or something along those lines. Well, I think that's what the Iowa dugout now asking is, is if it's a balk, the count's one and one. Okay, there you go. We do see uh, Coach Heller and Coach McGrath walking out to ask that question. And we'll uh, see when he flashes the signs up. Yeah. One and one. Okay, so, so it was a balk. Yeah, they called a balk. Okay. All right. <laughs> that makes a lot more sense. Oh, boy. All right, so it was a balk. No, disregard the check swing. It, the count is one and one. Two outs, runner at second base. Archer comes set, the pitch to Canny. Swing and a miss. It's one and two. We'll have to get the official score of the <laughs> change there. StatCast has Waddle with the slowest moving second stolen base in the history of stolen bases. It's going to be like that one parent in the crowd. Get him. <laughs> <You know? laughs> The key is that just, and again, I know you don't watch movies, but Jedi mind trick him. <laughs> I'm not taking second base. I am not <laughs> taking second base. <laughs> They're just putting the spell on us. Uh, huh? yeah, I mean, I, I, okay, he's not going. <laughs> Next thing you know, oh, he's standing boy. down there. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Archer with a great start to the second with a pair of strikeouts. He's looking for the third now. Great lead at second base. Here's the 2-2. Called third strike. Archer got him on the low inside corner for his third strikeout of the inning. One run does come across for the Vikings. It's 2-1. to one. Iowa with the lead. Bottom of the second coming up. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. The silly moments. The proud moments. Even the hard moments. They're what make life remarkable. And they're why Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield is here for every moment. Committed to making healthcare better, more affordable, with more choices for care. And service and coverage that give you peace of mind no matter what comes your way. So you can show up for every tender moment, every brave moment, and every wouldn't miss it for the world moment. Knowing that Blue is here for you. Go to wellmark.com slash every moment to find a plan right for you. Feel the excitement as NASCAR returns to the Iowa Speedway with Powerball and the Iowa Lottery. Just add the double play bonus to your Powerball ticket for $1, then enter it in the VIP club, and you could win tickets to the sold-out NASCAR race or other exclusive race weekend prizes. Feel the power of NASCAR and double play today. Woohoo! See complete rules and details at ialottery.com slash VIP. Hockey Baseball is brought to you by Riverside Casino and Golf Resort, home of the Draft Day Sports Lounge, a luxury hotel and spa, five restaurants and more, just minutes south of Iowa City. Michael Seegers comes up to lead off the Iowa second. 2-1, favoring the black and gold. Michael takes low and out, ball one. Seegers moving up a couple of spots in the batting order today. Well... He had uh, the last game he was batting seventh for Iowa, but prior to that he was all the way down to nine. And similar to what we say about Marcus Morgan, not necessarily a, 
a demotion with Seegers going all the way to the bottom, although he's probably not batting to the standards that he's hoping for with a 267 average. Squares to bunt here, ball high and out. Josh Carota Grower was the shortstop from Rutgers that was player of the week that uh, made it where the Hawkeye fellas couldn't get it. Were, were you able to dig up any stats? You know, funny enough, Rutgers on their website does not have the release for their guy getting player of the week. That's tough. So that's, just, a, that's a tough development from the, the sports info folks. So just there. on that principle, he didn't deserve it. <laughs> Here's a 3-1 to Seegers. Outside corner, full count pitch to Michael. I will I will continue efforting to, uh, to find it for you, though. You know I keep all those things in the back pocket for later in the year. 3-2, Michael hits it in the air, down the line and right. It'll carry over towards the line. Canny is there. Oh, he dropped it. He was in fair territory, dropped it. Struggling to pick it up in the right field corner. Seegers around second, headed for third. Poor throw into the infield, and it's cut off by the third baseman down the line towards home. Seegers gets to third on the E9. I'd love to give Michael a hit there, but I think it's going to be E9, don't you think, John? Yeah, I mean... He he was he was kind of coasting. He was in the right spot to catch it. And we saw that we saw that ball with uh, with Sam Peterson over the weekend too. That you know, it's tough, but but you you got to make that play. Yeah. We'll see Kellen Strohmeyer in the box now. First pitch swinging on the line, right side caught by the first baseman. Sent a spinner over to first. And it was caught by Brockemeyer for out number one. Yeah, he got jammed there. Curveball on the inside part of the plate and just got it right right on right above the handle and the next batter, didn't have Hawkeye. any zip. Second baseman number two, Gable Mitchell. So now the bottom of the order, Gable Mitchell is up. Squares to bunt. Did not offer at it. Ball one, high and out. Yeah, Grower was Carrillo Grower. 14 hits, 11 runs scored, eight RBIs. Did not strike out in 26 at bats. Hit 7.06 on the week. Line drive, base hit into right for Gable Mitchell. Michael Seegers comes down the line. He'll score three to one. Hawks. Gable Mitchell's turned into a bit of a uh, RBI machine here and lately in games. Yeah, for Gable that is uh, RBI number 16. Right fielder. Which puts him fifth on the team. It's pretty good for your, I mean, I know he batted leadoff there for a game or two, but mostly for your seven, eight, nine guy. Back to the top for Andy Nelson. Ball out. Yeah, I'll say uh, it It appears to us as, as we've continued to track the team, the lineup feels a little bit more balanced than, than earlier in the season. Swing and a miss by Nelson. You know, top to bottom, I don't think there are any easy outs right now in the Iowa batting lineup. No, I, I agree with that. A lot of guys can can do damage and, and do it in different ways, too. That's part of what makes it, it makes them difficult to get out. Nelson squares to bunt, puts it down the third baseline. This will be a tough play. No play. A barehanded effort by Waddle, but he was playing behind third base, and Nelson lays down a beauty down the left, uh, the third baseline. Just a really, really good bunt there. Didn't try to do too much to it. R recognized he had the third baseman way back. And so all he needed to do was get it over there away from the pitcher. And then with his speed, easily able to beat it out. Two on for Sam Peterson. One out in the inning, Iowa up 3-1 in the second. First pitch to Petey outside. Sam doubled in the first, would later score. I know why Wolver now has a lower ERA, even though he gets hit around a little bit. His fielding hasn't helped him a bit today. No. Uh, Grandview's committed two, arguably three, fielding mistakes. It's two errors on the board right now. And then with Mitchell, uh, with Nelson rather, in that last at bat, Third baseman not honoring his speed at all and not ready for that bunt. Here's the 1-1 one -one to Peterson. Popped up right side. This is shallow right. It'll carry to Canny a bit. Now Canny's sprinting forward. Did he overrun it? No, it's caught. And straight up right field, two down. It was a worthy question because he couldn't see it in the sun, and so by the time he saw it, he had a little bit of a panic attack as to, hey, I need to get in, and, and 
Again, we saw that with Sam Peterson when he flipped over to right field. You know, right. Came in a step on a line drive that then the wind carried it over his head as it keeps blowing and drifting. So, Runners at first and second. Mitchell out there at second. Nelson at first base. Two outs for Raider Tello. First pitch to Raider is high for a ball. Not sure why Gable Mitchell was headed back to second base on that one, but... He, he was fooled by a move there. Yeah, felt the presence of the second baseman and wonder if he heard something else. 1-0 delivery after a long pause. Here it comes. Popped up right side. That'll get foul out of play. Tello reached on an error in the first. Raider batting 373. Four Hawkeyes up over 300, Raider being one of them. Did get him his 23rd RBI this season. 1-1. One, one. Mm, nice breaking ball. It dropped in there for a strike. 72 mile an hour. Good sweeping breaking ball there. See some two-strike, two-out hitting, huh? Hawks could use some of that. Decent leads by both the runners. Here's the pitch. It's high. Nobody really being held on at all. Obviously not, not Nelson at first base, but Mitchell able to get an outstanding secondary on the on the hop and then the shuffle. Yeah, shortstop playing Tello to pull. Second baseman. 2-2, two -two, line drive into right center. It's going to tail away from the center fielder and get all the way to the wall. Here comes Mitchell. He'll jog home. We're waving Andy Nelson. Here's Andy around third. He'll score. Two RBI double. Raider Tello. He continues to stay hot for the black and gold. Yeah, really good swing there. 104 off the bat as he took that high breaking ball. And what starts right at the center fielder just has a little bit of slice in it and then the wind just accelerates moving away from him and no chance there we had a great view of that didn't we that that path of that ball you could really see you, you knew he had no chance to get it once None. it was going it's like that ball is going to fade away from him and he is in big trouble reese moore with two outs first pitch to reese Popped up down the left field line. This one could stay in play. Third baseman giving it a look, and it dropped in play, and I don't. I think he gave up on it. It's a foul ball. I think he had ran too far. I think he was actually too far out into left field, and the ball blew back in short of him. Yeah, any That's got to be tricky for the infielders on the left side. Well, yeah, it's just it, you're just so not used to tracking balls that way, and we saw Blake Guerin pop out. Uh, over the weekend when a ball that blew back to the catcher. It was just a strange movement. Wolver deals in the dirt to Moore. Count even at one. Iowa leading 5-1 in the bottom of the second, giving their uh, midweek pitchers plenty of run support early on. Count even at one for Moore. Wolver comes set, looks at Raider at second base. The pitch fouled over to the left. And this is really what you want to see out of the Hawkeye hitters again. Just good at bat after good at bat. Doesn't mean you don't make an out here or there or, or, uh, or, or have a, you know, someone has a bad at bat, but just, you know, stringing good at bats together over and over. One, two, ground ball to the right side. The first baseman shields from the sun. It's Brockemeyer, and he'll head over to first base. And touches the bag for the third out of the inning. 5-1 Iowa after three more come across in the bottom of the second. We're back with more right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Around here, Jack Frost nips more than just your nose. That's why the Midwest gets Honda. Dependable, all-wheel drive, with heated steering wheel and seats to keep Jack Frost off your seat. Which will make it very happy. And since it's no fun to gas up in this weather, isn't it cool that Honda has such legendary fuel efficiency? New Hondas are arriving, but so is Mr. Frost. So see your Central Midwest Honda dealer. Honda gets the Midwest. Are aches, pains, or injuries keeping you on the sidelines? At Athletico, our movement experts are here to help you turn your setbacks into comebacks and create a personalized game plan for your recovery. With no prescription or referral needed, Athletico Physical Therapy is where your comeback story begins. 
Get started today by scheduling a free assessment at athletico.com. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all-suite hotels. Homewood Suites and Home to Suites by Hilton. Each offer guests spacious suites, complimentary breakfast, 24-hour fitness center, pool, hot tub, guest laundry, and convenient locations. Let their warm and friendly staff take care of you and your family when you visit Hawkeye Country. Iowa leads Grandview 5-1 in the top of the third. The Hawkeyes will make a pitching change, bringing in the redshirt senior from Little Falls, Minnesota. Left-handed pitcher, Caleb Strack. Four appearances, an inning in the third, giving up a hit, two walks, two strikeouts. Opponents hitting 200 against Caleb. Fastball is going to be upper 80s, might touch 90. He's got a good changeup and a good curveball, actually, that works off of those. So chance for the left-hander to do some damage here. And he'll see a left-hander right off the rip. This is uh, Schwartz. Dane Schwartz, senior from Plato, Minnesota. Number four, Dane Schwartz. He's one of those guys, 13 walks to 10 strikeouts. So good plate discipline, even though his average is down a little bit. Swinging at the first pitch, hitting it foul over to the left. Strack is a pitcher on the other side for Iowa that uh, Coach Heller talked about in, in the pregame conversation we had with him. Been pitching really well for Iowa and deserves some time today. Here's the one from Strack, breaking ball outside away from the left-handed hitter, count even at one. Caleb's such a good voice in the clubhouse, too. You know, a guy that's been around the block, um, but he's, he's respected because he, you know, even though he hasn't gotten as many innings as some of the guys, he just keeps coming in and doing work. Lined into right field, it will drop in front of Nelson for a base hit. Boy, Schwartz just threw his hands at that and somehow got around on it. A good P got got fooled. You know, he was able to get a breaking ball. It was away from him a little bit and still kind of dropped it on there. That one might have been the changeup and was able to rip it out into right field and change up without too much movement on it. Outside and away from him in the zone, but uh, he guessed right on the location, but the speed, he was able to lift it over into right. Top of the order for Brock Johnson. Johnson, arguably the best hitter for Grandview. In terms of batting average, he is entering the game up over 400. On base percentage north of 500. Ooh, pitch inside from Strack. So with that being said, okay, so John, you bring up the on base percentage. He gets on by getting hits. And not too many uh, of, of anything else, right? Yeah. Well, 12 walks, that's 12, quite a few actually. Yeah, 12 walks isn't bad, seven strikeouts. 1-1, one, one, look out in the Iowa dugout. Hard line drive over to the right. I mean, I think the, the interesting thing is is he gets up a lot. I mean, in 21 games, he has 68 at-bats. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you start when you start pushing four at-bats a game, yeah. or four plate appearances every single game. Making the most of his uh, opportunities, 426 hitter. I've gotten him out today already. The ground out to... Cop to start the game at first base. Strack challenged him up and in with an off speed. He hit it foul, one and two. Another guy with six stolen bases, so decent enough speed. Ten extra base hits in total. Strack pitches it. Here's a spinner hit to the left side. Tello and Seegers come together. They throw it to first. It's Raider. Who's late on the throw to first? I don't know what you would have done with that pit, with that, uh, with that ground ball. I, I haven't seen. You know, we were joking about uh, you know the foot distance that we had this weekend might have been the the weirdest one there. That ball came off the bat at 41 miles an hour. Went, it flew 96 feet and just into a perfect spot to cause a heap of trouble. Total spinner off the bat and blooped up into the air just slightly. And then when it hit the ground, it kicked over towards Tello at third. Swing and a miss by Brock Reinhardt. Couple of runners on for Grandview with nobody out. 
Yeah, I, I was going to spin away from Seegers. He was playing a, a normal depth shortstop. He had no chance. Tello was too far over towards second base for him to go get easily. Here's a blooper left side. Seegers into shallow left center. He's got it with ease. No ability to tag. And, and in fact, it looks like they called the infield fly. And that was 63 mile an hour off the bat. I mean, <laughs> Caleb's done a great job for having three, you know, two guys standing on base and a ball that uh, could have created some issue there. One out for Nolan Drill. Strack deals low and in. Good pitch from Caleb, but just out of the zone. A lot of decent amount of sweeping break on that. Strack looking in for the sign from Reese Moore. He's got it. 1-0 pitch. Inside hit him. Can you just go with drill got drilled? Got drilled. How many times that happened for him? Uh, that would be number six, tying him for the team lead. So mm -hmm. it's in the name. <laughs> so it happens fairly fairly regularly. Although if I'm going to get hit, getting hit with it, the 80 mile an hour changeup is probably the better way to do it than than anything else. All right, things getting a little interesting in the top of the third. 5-1 Iowa, but the base is loaded and one out for Brokemeyer. This is hit back to the screen on his first pitch that he sees from Caleb Strack. A one, low, good block by Moore. One ball, one strike. Brokemeyer struck out to start the second. Well, time called, and Moore will walk out to talk to his pitcher. Yeah, we talked about how the wind would shift. Yeah, it looks like it's blowing maybe a little bit more in. Yes. And not as across as it was earlier. But I guess it depends on which... Uh, which random chaos flag you're looking at. Yes, it's all left to right. A lot of disorder out there by the Big Ten flags. We need to get to the bottom of that, John. We talked about it this weekend. Well, we, we got our answer, and you didn't like it. They are random. That, that just I just don't uh, – I can't get behind that. You can't accept that answer? I can't answer? accept it. All right. What's that, what's that saying? I need to accept the things I can't change or yep. whatever? Here's a rocket hit down the right field line, thankfully getting out of play over to the right. Foul ball, one and two. Hit the CAM bus. <laughs> Saying hello to the CAM bus driver. I wonder, you know, what, what happens if something hits the CAM bus. If the CAM bus hits something, there's some repercussions. But <laughs> <laughs> One ball, two strikes. Strack ready. Here's the pitch. Way inside. Ball two. Tried to guide that one, John. You could see it. Yeah, I was just trying to throw the – that was the breaking ball there as he snapped that one inside. Had 20 inches of break, just didn't start it where he needed to. This is hit foul in the box. It'll go in between Moore and Strack. Look at the spin after that. Hit the foot of Brokemeyer. It popped up into the air, bounced right in front of Strack, right in between home plate and the mound, and then went all the way over to the third baseline. Spun, yeah, <laughs> foot, foot in front of the third baseline there. See if Strack has an out pitch here. That was the fastball. See if he goes back to that changeup or what he tries to use to get him out here. There's some power here. Have to be careful. High pop-up. This is on the infield. We have infield fly again. Gable Mitchell at second base still running forward. Gable's got it as he drops to a knee. That had to have been incredibly tough for Mitchell on a ball that off the bat should have probably been in between Seegers and Tello. Well, and yeah, and that's what you saw. The, Home the, the, the field umpires waited a little bit before they called infield fly rule because somebody has to be in position to catch it. <laughs> and so to, for, to your point, to a ball that looked like it was going to go straight to Seegers, ends up in the baseline between first and second in the middle. Now two outs, bases loaded for Hemrick. That's like, that's like when uh, you go to try to catch a Frisbee and you kind of overrun it. Here's a pop-up left side on the infield. This is Tello's turn. Now he's sprinting forward. Raider can't get to it. It lands on the coach's box. <laughs> Foul ball. Wow. 
Well, Rader it, took a few steps back towards the outfield and then had to full-on sprint forward and still couldn't get to it. That's incredible. It, it's Well, especially a ball that's softly hit. You know, it, the, wind, the wind wins, and so it just starts pushing it the wrong direction and just had no chance to come back in and get it. New life for the Grandview left fielder now. The 1-1. Swing and a foul tip. <laughs> did that go off the cap of the bat, John? I think it did. What are we seeing in this inning? <laughs> we, may, we may get our bizarre baseball bingo covered here. Oh, man. I thought it was just an ordinary swing and miss, but one ball, two strikes, two outs. Strack looking to get out of the jam in the third. He's got the sign, the pitch. Just high and out. Good spot, two and two. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a really nice pitch there. Fastball, top of the zone, just off the plate. See if he could get his eyes big enough to chase it, but good discipline not to. Two two. Popped up center field. Huxdorf shading his eyes from the sun. He's got it for the third out. All right, so some traffic for Grandview. They get three runners on. They load the bases with less than two outs, but nothing doing for them. 5-1 Hawks as we go to the bottom of the third. This is Iowa Baseball from Learfield. Our mission at Open All is to provide exceptional retirement living and health services through life care. I'm Steve Rowe, CEO. We are a not-for-profit life plan community and have served the Iowa City area for 57 years. Oaknell is located near University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics, Kinnick Stadium, Carver Hawkeye Arena, Hancher Auditorium, and downtown Iowa City. Visit our website at oaknell.com to learn more. We're a proud sponsor of Hawkeye Athletics. Go Hawks! I'm Ingrid Lizarraga, breast surgeon at the University of Iowa Holden Comprehensive Cancer Center, the state's only NCI-designated cancer center. Here, we look beyond just the type of cancer you have to discover the molecular details of the disease. We have teams dedicated to each cancer type with treatments and trials you won't find anywhere else in Iowa. Go to uihc.org slash cancer. Kyle Uxdorf, Davis Cop, Michael Seegers will come up in the Iowa org slash cancer. Kyle Uxdorf, Davis Cop, Michael Seegers will come up in the Iowa third. The Hawkeyes out in front five to one this afternoon. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. 10 seconds station ID. This is Iowa Hawkeye baseball. Good to see Caleb Strack get out of that inning there, John. Yeah, because really, you know, again, two of those balls were just not hit very hard at all and, and did a really good job kind of sawing off bats but didn't have anything to show for it. So it was nice to have him be able to get through it unscathed. Huxdorf is the batter, squares to bunt and pulls it back for ball one. New pitcher into the game for Grandview, tall right-hander, six foot eight, a senior, Ryan Roby, operating just out of the stretch. 1-0 pitch from Roby is high and out, ball two. Huxdorf with good discipline. Roby making his fifth appearance, got a 1-0 record. He's started three games for Grandview. Here's a 2-0, called strike on the inside corner. Not sure if maybe the track man thing's getting blown around a little and it's not in the right <laughs> spot. I'm going to be careful with the umpires today. Huxdorf hits this in the air to deep right center. It's carrying well, and it is off the wall. One hops on the track and hits the wall. It's a double to lead off the third for Kyle Huxdorf. Took a pretty good breaking ball down and away there. Sent it out. Again, any ball that kind of goes out that direction. Right fielder's been shaded over toward the line, so... Tough spot for him. Third double of the year for Huxdorf. Took it to right, John. That's the that's the theme of today's today's uh, contest. And and Coach Heller mentioned it a bit too when we go to uh, 
Purdue this weekend. It's supposed to be cold, maybe some rain, some wind. Not going to be pleasant over in West Lafayette. No, the Friday high, I think I sent it to you, was 48 or something. Yeah. So, Davis Cop takes strike one. So we really need to leave that door closed for yes. a while. I agree. Oh, and one to cop. Grounded right back to the pitcher. Roby's got it. He'll check the runner at second, and then go over to first base and get Davis. Out number one. Yeah, just not, not getting any good weather now in the Midwest. With uh, West Lafayette, yeah, you mentioned low 50s at best while we're there. And it'll be the first time for both of us at, the, at that baseball stadium. So uh, we'll see the way the wind blows in West Lafayette. <laughs> Where does that rank among your Big Ten cities that you've been to, John? Um, I've been there. Uh, I've been there for volleyball, and the hotel we'll stay at is is student run. They do a really really nice job, and it's kind of right on right on the edge of campus in their downtown area. So it, it's very convenient to walk around and and be on campus. It's it's pretty cool. Michael Seegers in the box, takes low and out ball two. So it's up there. Yeah. They good, do a nice job. Good uh, walking territory for us. Very good walking territory. Okay, all right. Snacks are readily available. Campus is right there. 2-0 to Michael. Outside corner strike one, two and one. That's the key, John. I, In my years of going to West Lafayette, haven't found much to do, so uh, I'll take your word for it and look forward to uh, the weekend. Well, the first time I was in West Lafayette for the, a football game years and years ago, I didn't think as highly of it as I did when we stayed down 2-1 is at the knees, 2-2. Two two. When we stayed down at the hotel that's that's more on campus. so Good. So I have some potential to... I, your opinion could improve, <laughs> <Okay>. I think. <laughs> Good. All right. Two balls, two strikes, one out for Seegers. Looking to swing the bat. Huxdorf at second base. 5-1 Iowa in the third. Huxdorf takes off for third. It's hit on the ground right to Huck at third. He jumps over the ball and gets into left. Huck's going to score after all that. He hurdled the baseball as it was going into left on a chopper from Seegers. Six one Hawks. Again, he goes kind of full matrix on it to get uh, to get around and over. Third baseman just kind of watched him. I don't. It didn't look like the third baseman was actually breaking to cover the bag either. But made no move to field the ball and and just kind of then watched Huck jump over it and worked out well for Seegers as he gets an RBI single. Huck is a ball magnet. Here's Kellen Strohmeyer, a swing and a miss by Strohmeyer. Really nice, smooth-looking swing. He'd probably like to have that one back. Middle, middle from Roby. Yeah, the 84-mile-an-hour fastball right in Stroh's smack zone. Here's the 1 high and out. Yeah, on the play before, Huck had a big lead and then kind of timed up the jump and then realized, hey, I'm... I'm a third of halfway there already. I got to go. And then Seeks had to swing with two strikes. If Michael tries to run. Seegers takes, uh, rather, Strohmeyer takes a backdoor breaking ball for a strike. It's one and two. Limited plate appearances for Strohmeyer in the early going. Here's the one two. Fouled off of the catcher. We'll do it again. What I like from Stroh the last few times we've seen him take at bats, though, is as he's been more aggressive at the plate. The times we'd seen him early in the year, maybe he was taking some of the really good pitches he saw, and then when behind in the count, he wasn't getting much good to hit after that. High heater, swing and a miss by Strohmeyer. It'll come. He's young. It's early in his career. Yeah, and like I said, I think as, as he's more comfortable – Swinging at some of those early pitches. I mean, you see Sam Peterson do it now where he's able to take that first pitch fastball that's in the zone he likes and, and take advantage of it or, or, you know, work a count and get ahead a little bit. Two outs for Gable Mitchell. He'll bat from the left side against the right-handed throwing Ryan Roby. 6-1 Iowa in the third. Seegers at first base. He's had a consistent lead the whole time. Hasn't been leaning towards second. 
1-0 is in the dirt. Good read by Seegers on the pitch in the dirt, and he'll take second base. That was not a great throw to second base. No, could have been better, John. I mean, I don't know that he gets Michael anyway, but the ball didn't get that far away from the catcher and, and maybe kind of rushed it a little bit and threw it in the ground. Gave himself a, a chance by making a nice pick, but uh, couldn't execute the throw. And now Seeger's in scoring position for Mitchell. The 2-0 hit on the ground, right side. High chopper, Mitchell sprinting down the line. He is out at first base. Close play, but out on the ground, out to second. A couple of base runners for Iowa, and another run across. 6-1 Hawks will go to the fourth after this. This is Iowa baseball from Learfield. How do you become America's best-selling brand? Let's break it down. Innovative tech means smarter and safer driving. Intelligent all-wheel drive will keep you ready for anything. And built Ford Tough Trucks will always get the job done. Plus, come into your local Ford store today and get super low APR financing, big cash back, and great lease offers on Ford's full line of cars, trucks, and SUVs. That's Ford, and that's how you become America's best-selling brand. Sales claim based on calendar year sales. Hi, Chef Grunder. Let's dive right into the machine shed. Fridays here mean all you care to have fried or broiled North Atlantic cod. Or try our bone-in seasoned catfish, lightly fried. More of a salmon lover? Choose between the machine shed's white wine sauce or apple bourbon glaze. Our sautéed savory shrimp will satisfy your taste buds with Old Bay seasoning and Asiago cheese. Join us this Friday for seafood worth savoring at the shed. Iowa 80 and Hickman Road, Urbandale, and Iowa 80 Northwest Boulevard, Davenport. For comprehensive coverage of college baseball and softball all season long, tune to Sirius XM College Sports Radio 372 in the car and on the all-new Sirius XM app. Sirius XM is the home of your favorite team and conference, including live games plus interviews and analysis. So cheer along online with the Sirius XM app and listen to your favorite team anywhere. Get a free trial at SiriusXM.us slash Big Ten Radio 2023. Top of the fourth at Banks this afternoon. Iowa leading Grandview 6-1. to one. The Hawkeyes will make a pitching change and go to the redshirt junior right-hander from Cedar Falls. Transfer in from Dallas Baptist. Let's see what Reese Buter's got for the Hawks today. 0-1 oh on the season in his five appearances. Been, uh, been knocked around a little bit, but been better. You know, he came back out last midweek, pitched, pitched pretty well. You know, probably more importantly now is how does he respond after being sick last week. Uh, Reese has got a fastball that can get up to the mid-90s, change-up slider that comes off that. He even has a sweeper as well. So, again, another another pitcher with a good mix of pitches. Uh, you know, the thing he had trouble with early in the year was he could get to he could get to two strikes, but then couldn't couldn't get that last pitch by or couldn't get the out pitch. Buter deals to Brooke Heinen, who had squared the bunt and made contact and knocked it foul. So Heinen enters as a 321 batter. Tripled in his first at bat, had a hit last year in the game. Buter deals the 0-1, hit foul over the right, nothing in two. And that's 95, so again, we just mentioned that this is the part uh, this is the part of the equation that hasn't been a problem for Reese it's can he now miss the bat or induce that soft contact fair 0-2 breaking ball out 1-2 and two. Okay, and, and this is something that I think we analyzed last year you get to 0-2 and if, if you feel that it's necessary that you throw a chase pitch instead of just throwing your best then come right back with the 1-2 Buter deals and got him swing and a miss but so it's a little bit of a mindset, you know. It's it's the idea that my stuff is good enough to get you out, even in the zone. Not, not hey, I'm going to make you look silly by making you swing and miss. It's now I'm going to come, I'm going to come right to the zone, and you still don't have it. That's the point right there. The, the, it's possible to strike people out by throwing it in the zone. Here's a line drive foul over to the right, and that's something that. I guess selfishly, I'd like to see a little more of. Well, and that pitch there, that that pitch is a good quote unquote waste pitch. You know, that ball was right on the edge. It's in a really good spot. He gets the swing and miss. Oh one, hard fastball, low and in. 
it's when the the you know the two strike pitches are a foot outside or a foot high that you know nobody's swinging at those at this level mm-hmm. you say it all the time and you make a great point that have to be competitive competitive pitches whether they're you know in or out of the zone right i mean if i'm walking up to the plate sure i'm swinging at all that because i can't see it i'm just <laughs> but but these guys are all trained well and and they they know hey that okay out of the hand that ball's not in my zone Two balls and a strike. Buter delivers. Ground ball right side. Cop will take a couple steps forward. He's got it. Davis over to the bag to retire. Waddle, two down. And that's a great pitch behind two and one. You know, he throws a 94-mile-an-hour fastball just on the bottom edge of the zone, the you know, but, but on the outside part of the plate. So he didn't give in, but he's able to, to induce soft contact and get that out. Buter with a strong showing to this point. Two up, two down. The batter is Connor Canny. Reese fires, foul off of Moore's mask, and Reese goes with the old-fashioned uh, catcher's mask set up with the, the batting helmet backwards and the face guard on front, and the face guard got knocked off. And we've seen Hawkeye pitchers be able to get two outs now again. Mm-hmm. Same, same concept. Good pitch there, breaking ball. Excellent spot. Get the third one. You know, go ahead and get the third out now. Finish the pitch, finish the at-bat, finish the inning. And Reese has the opportunity to do that now. No balls, two strikes. Here it comes from Buter. Just outside. Boy, that's an outstanding pitch, though, again. That's that. That's your that that's your O2 pitch right there. It's it's elevated, it's off the plate, but it's it's extremely close on both counts. Come right back in now, Reese. The one-two. Beautiful from Buter. Called third strike. Low inside corner. Got him. Well done. Love to see that from Reese. That's that's exactly the confidence builder he needs right now. Couple of strikeouts for Reese in the fourth. I will lead 6-1. We're back in just a moment. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. At MidAmerican Energy, our 1.6 million customers depend on our energy 24-7. That's why we We work 24-7 to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. To keep our 99.9% reliability record, we're enhancing our technology, improving resiliency, and investing in critical infrastructure. We're generating power from all available resources to cover any increases in demand. And we're innovating to ensure you always have the energy you need. MidAmerican Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Hi, it's your friend, social media. You know where I showcase the cool life of sports stars and friends. But don't fall for the editing and good lighting, because we all have struggles and challenges, like with alcohol or drug use, gambling, or our mental health. You know, talking about it is a sign of strength. Maybe you don't know who to talk to? Your Life Iowa can give you resources or treatment options. Get free 24-7 confidential support. Call, text, or chat online at yourlifeiowa.org. A message from Iowa HHS. University of Iowa Healthcare has the game plan for your same-day healthcare needs. If you need treatment for a common illness or minor injury, visit one of several UI quick care or urgent care locations throughout the Iowa City Cedar Rapids corridor. Their care and expertise will help you get back in the game. UI Healthcare is proud to sponsor your Iowa Hawkeyes. 6-1 Iowa, bottom of the fourth. We'll go to the top of the order for Andy Nelson. We will face a new Grandview pitcher. This is Josh Stoll, right-hander, deals to Nelson. Downstairs, ball one. Stoll, a junior from Andover, Minnesota. 0-3 on the season with an 11.57 ERA. Nelson drives this in the air, deep to right center. It's carrying well. Get going, baby. It is gone. Andy Nelson over the right center field wall. Boom. 103 off the bat, 415 carry, and that doesn't factor any wins. So that ball is that ball's gone without the win. So Excellent. Well struck there as Andy took the took the 83 mile an hour pitch that was center of the zone but up and just drove it right back and again that's what's going to make him a really nice leadoff hitter is just the ability drop down a bunt earlier used his speed and then used his power there second home run of the season for nelson who is now two for two but he's reached in all three plate appearances a walk a single and now a home run 7-1 iowa 
Sam Peterson takes up and in. Ball two from Stoll. Stoll is not rattled, unfazed, gets right back on the rubber and deals. Here comes the 2-0. Outside ball three. And again, that works for Andy because you know he, he's willing to go to right center field and do that you know, instead of trying to pull that ball. Four pitch walk to Peterson. That, that occurred rather quickly. <laughs> Man. So, Stoll did work quickly. He just wasn't working effectively. <laughs> Iowa's had tons of pitches to hit in the early going. Just the the second walk of the game for the Hawks because they've been putting the ball in play. Third baseman, yeah, seven Raider. hits, four Tello. of those extra base hits already. Peterson at first for Raider Tello. Nobody out. Raider takes right down the middle for strike one. It was down low. I mean, it was a strike, but a little bit lower than Raider is willing to offer at. 0-1, similar spot, but much lower, ball one. Raider likes belt to letter high much more than he likes knee high. He'll swing it whichever one suits his needs, but, but he <laughs> likes the one up a little bit yeah. more. Count even at one for the Iowa third baseman. The pitch inside, ball two. I had mentioned uh, when we were at Jacksonville State, I think maybe, or maybe Ole Miss, that his bat looked like a, a cricket bat. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and I think that was the case this last weekend. Oh. His... Either that or the ball looked like it was as big as can be. Here's a ground ball left side through into left field. Tello on yet again for the third time today. Reached on an error, doubled in the second, and has now singled in the fourth. Iowa racking up the hits, up to eight now. Yeah, and the next time he complains about making an out on 100 mile an hour, uh, he, he needs to remember that one, that, <laughs> that he 78 mile an hour rolls through the infield. But yeah. Uh, well, uh, well positioned gets him the single. We know Raider. He's not thrilled with that base hit right there. Not enough power behind it, even though he's on base and raising his batting average. Yeah, he knows he didn't full barrel that one. Moore takes a strike, low outside corner. And again, what you what you like to see from the Hawkeye hitters here is you know, score to runs in every inning, but a lot of a lot of good at bats. Yeah. Two on, nobody out for more. Low and out from Stoll. I was scored in every inning this afternoon. Two in the first, three in the second, one in the third, one so far in the fourth. Peterson at second, Tello at first. One ball, one strike. The pitch to Moore. Downstairs, ball two. Trying to figure out why the second baseman's in charge of holding PD on second base with Reese Moore up. I'm going to venture to say miscommunication. <laughs> but he's Somebody needs to signal that in from their dugout because Moore's going to pull it right over there. You would think so. 2-1, ripped foul down the right field line. The wind's starting to whistle again. Mm-hmm. Pulled the crowd mic in as far as I could today. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. Moore looking to get on for the first time today. 0 for 2. Pitch from Stoll outside. Full count. I think it's important that the crowd mic picks up a little bit of the wind just to, just to let people know that we are not lying up here. It's windy. <laughs> Saves us from having to regularly repeat it. Yeah. Stoll set with the full count pitch. Here it is. Swing and a miss. Foul tip by Moore. He's down on strikes for out number one. Fastball maybe just a little bit away. And tough pitch to tough pitch to pull if you're Reese. The right fielder, Kyle Huckstorf. That'll bring up Kyle Huckstorf. I was center fielder, doubled and scored. His last time up in the third. Breaking ball, ooh, got him in the shoulder. Thought it was gonna be a breaking ball, never broke. Must have been just the change up. Kyle takes it on the outside of the shoulder and the bases are loaded. Exit speed off Kyle's shoulder was 47 miles. <laughs> <laughs> you think Kyle had an idea that that one might break because he didn't really get out of the way of it and then it was almost as if he was surprised that it hit him. Well, one of the things with Kyle is, is you know, the coaching Staff calls it taking your dose. He's really good at standing in and 
taking a pitch and realized he wasn't going to catch a Brody Breck fastball in the elbow pad, so couldn't take that one for the team. Pieces loaded for Iowa's first baseman today. This is Davis Kopp. He's 0 for 2 with a couple of ground outs. Seven to one, Hawks in the fourth. Cop hits a ground ball to the left side. The shortstop has it. Long throw to first, high throw, but down to the bag is Brokemeyer to get Cop. Peterson scores from third. It's eight one Iowa. Middle infielders are negotiating there as to why the second baseman wasn't covering earlier, and I believe the second baseman's telling the shortstop I was there. But I don't know that they really had a play on Huck at second. I don't think that would have worked out very well if he'd have gone that way. Michael Huck was getting there quickly and no chance at turning a double play. Two in scoring position, two outs for Michael Seegers. Strike one to Michael. I don't know if the shortstop goes through his prep step stuff, but he is out in the outfield cut of grass here beyond the beyond the normal infield. Not a not a place you normally see teams play Michael. A one inside almost hit Seegers. I mean, if it Questioning were, but not being critical. I, I don't necessarily understand the defensive alignment there on that. In a, in a different game Seegers is bunting for a base hit here pretty easily. 1-1 one, one, Michael. Skies in the air down the right field line and out of play. You're right. Yeah, the, Notice the third baseman too. Uh, he's way behind the bag at third. And the, the shortstop is in the green grass of the outfield. So if that ball gets to him, Michael's beating it out, unless he rockets it to him. Right. Any chopper, Michael's going to get there. One, two. Ah, instead, he hits it on the ground to the right side. This is Johnson. He'll throw Seegers out at first base to retire the side. A few more runs come across for Iowa. It's 8-1. We'll head to the fifth right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Even the simplest act can set a chain of good in motion. Like choosing Delta Dental of Iowa for your dental and vision insurance. Because we invest in your community. So whether you get your plan at work or purchase it through us, you make a difference for others. Visit SharingHealthySmiles.com and choose Delta Dental for your smile, for your health, and for your community. American Equity salutes today's hero of the game. As a proud sponsor of the ongoing recognition of our military during Hawkeye games this season, please join American Equity in thanking all who have served our country. American Equity is more than just retirement savings and income products. They are committed to providing you best-in-class service and high-quality retirement income that helps deliver the independence to dream and reach your goals. To learn more about American Equity, please visit their website at American-Equity.com. When corn grows fuel, Iowans win. Ethanol is a renewable fuel that's better for our environment, our health, and our wallets. Share your winning moments using hashtag Iowans win, and you could win even more from Iowa corn. 8-1 Iowa in the fifth. Welcome back to the broadcast booth. John Evans and John Leo at Banks this afternoon. Purdue this weekend, three-game set with the Boilermakers, who are off to a pretty decent start. Uh, to their season, and it's all about the, the pressure that you can relieve by getting off to a good start in conference play. So we're looking forward to that one starting Friday afternoon in West Lafayette. All right, new pitcher into the game for Iowa, junior right-hander from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Chaz Wheatley is in for the Hawks. Seven appearances on the year, five and two-thirds innings, four hits, four runs have all been earned, three walks, three strikeouts. Opponents hitting him at just 222, so it's like his damage is... His damage has come in pockets, you know, when he's when he's been sharp, he's been really sharp, and when he's given up runs or hits, they've they've led to runs. So see if he can if he can be sharp here. He'll face nine one two. Schwartz is the first one to see him. Wheatley out of the windup, delivers, ground ball right side, cop backhand stabs at it, and ricocheted off his glove and into right field. Schwartz is on. I'm thinking hit there, John. Yeah. It is a hit. Yeah, that'll go as a hit. That's that's one that uh, 
you know, whether it's the whether it's the son, the spin, or, or a guy that doesn't play a ton of first base. Johnson. My guess is he's going to tell you he wanted to catch that. Tough play for a, for a number of even normal first basemen. Top of the order now for Brock Johnson, right-handed hitter. Wheatley out of the stretch, taking his time. First pitch, strike at the knees. I was just pulling up, and I know RPI this time of the year isn't quite the end-all, be-all yet, but Purdue 81 in the RPI, so about the same spot right now where Iowa sits. So playing on the road for Iowa, a chance to, to do something positive. Here's a 1 High fly ball to right. Ooh, this will carry well. Nelson's already at the wall. That's going to be gone. That is a home run by Brock Johnson. And for him, his sixth of the season, third best for Grandview, and it's 8-3. to three. Yeah, That ball is 376. So, again, another one of those that probably without the wind gets out. Uh, with the wind, um, the turns into a kind of a no-doubter as you hit it right on the head there. As Andy turned to track it, he already was bumped into the wall, so there wasn't a lot of room to go. All right, this is Reinhardt, ball one. Wheatley will go back to the windup. And now Chaz struggling to find the strike zone, throws it low and in. Reinhardt's a left-handed hitter. He's 0 for 2 this afternoon. Wheatley looking to throw him a strike. Here's the 2-0. Ground ball to the right side. Cop knocks it down. He'll jog over to the bag for the first out of the inning. Pretty good. Pretty good catch on the short hop there. That's probably where uh, being a catcher helps you. Although when <laughs> yeah. you're at first base and you get a chopper like that, you do not have the chest protector, Davis. <laughs> Yeah, he doesn't have uh, doesn't have any of the extra gear. We'll see Nolan drill, check swing. Did he go? They're not even going to send it down for a look. Outside ball one. Nice pitch from Chaz on the inside corner. One and one. Eight to three, Iowa in the fifth. Swing and a miss. There's the sinker from Chaz. One and two. Yeah, that one was outstanding pitch there. I don't know if it's the delivery, that uh, the funky delivery from Chaz that makes that pitch look like it has a lot more movement than it really does. One, two, hit on the ground left side. Raiders got it. A little bit of a funny high hop to him. He'll throw it across the diamond for out number two. Yeah, almost a little top spin. Kind of got on him quick with a, a big up bounce there. Stuck with it nicely and good toss across the diamond. The next batter for the Vikings, first baseman, Eric Brockheimer. And so after giving up the two-run home run, Wheatley has settled in. Got a couple of outs now. Here's Brokemeyer. First pitch to him goes to the backstop outside. Yeah, I think that was just an overthrown slider there, so you didn't get any of the break or anything normal. Just kind of pulled it out there. Inside this time from Wheatley, 2-0. See Chaz battle back here. Out of the windup, here's the pitch from Chaz. Swing and a miss. Good fastball there down below the zone, but got the, got the chase. Got some help. Two balls, one strike. The pitch to Brokemeyer. Tapped foul over to the left. Two and two. Hawkeyes will have uh, Strohmeyer, Mitchell, and Nelson do up. The bottom of the fifth. I'd like to see 
Dro find his find some good success. Yes. Two two from Chaz. Low and out, full count. Just overthrown that same pitch a couple times now. And not an easy day with your hands to have good feel on those.
down there. Yes. So I get all my I get all my good information from them. I can't believe sophomore Aaron Savory hasn't been relieved of his duties as the ball bag guy down the line. Well, I think that was true, uh, due to maybe Sav's. Uh, uh, Actions early. <laughs> Got it. Early Noted. in the season. Noted. Ooh. Ooh, this is driven down the line and left and fair. Here comes the throw into second base and Balderas, Ez Balderas, is in with a stand up double and that means the world to him to start the ninth. That was a flat rope. He got the. Uh, <laughs> Was the was the third baseman there? Got a uh, uh, got an assist on the last out of the out of the half inning, and then ropes one down the left field line. All right. Durmer, Durmer deals a strike to Bryce Stalder, hitting for the first time today. Left-handed hitter. Durmer comes set. The pause and the 0-1 pitch is low and in. Cade Moss behind the plate for Iowa. Balderas is now hitting. He's 5 for 11 on the year. 1-1 one, one from Dermer. Grounded foul in front of the Iowa dugout. It's like, what do I got to do, coach? Get me in. Yeah. <laughs> At least be considered for a DH spot. <laughs> There's definitely some power for Balderas. Foul tip and caught by Kate Moss. Durmer comes back with a strikeout of Stalder for out number one. Strikeout number one. Strikeout teacher. Fourteenth Hawkeye strikeout. Good job from the Hawkeye pitchers. Right. Uh, I think this is a, a well-rounded victory for Iowa. Clearly the offense doing a nice job scoring in all innings but one and putting up a 15-run inning in the fifth. 25 runs on 25 hits for Iowa. Three runs, eight hits, five errors for Grandview. Iowa's played a clean game defensively. One ball, no strikes. Pitch from Dermer is low, ball two. I mean, Iowa at 65% strikes for the game. I mean, that's that's a good number. And, and it really hasn't been because Grandview's been free swinging. I mean, it's they've swung at strikes, and Iowa pitching's... Induce some soft contact. Just like that right there. On the ground to short. Mitchell, who's playing shortstop, throws to first base for out number two. And we're down to the final out of today's contest. I'm going to have one more pinch hitter here. Looks like as we go to the top of the order, Brock Johnson will not bat. Runner at third, two outs. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go with that name. <laughs> <laughs> it's that or it's Jalen, one or the other. You can go either direction if you want. Jalen Aguaniga? That's what I'm going with. Okay. Strike one. Here's a blooper to the right side. I only had to say it once, John. <laughs> ben Swales makes the catch in shallow right. For the third out, and that'll do it. Hawks win 25 to three, and move to 11 and nine on the season. Runner on base. We'll take a break. We'll come back with post game coverage right after this. This is Hawkeye baseball from Learfield. If you or someone you know is having thoughts of suicide, experiencing a mental health or substance use crisis, or just need someone to listen, 988 provides a direct connection to free, confidential, and compassionate support. When you call, text, or chat 988, you'll be quickly connected to trained crisis counselors who will listen to your concerns, provide support, and connect you to additional resources if needed. There is hope. You are not alone. For 24-7 support, call or text 988 or chat 988lifeline.org. 
At MidAmerican Energy, our 1.6 million customers depend on our energy 24-7. That's why we work 24-7 to deliver the safe, reliable energy you need. To keep our 99.9% reliability record, we're enhancing our technology, improving resiliency, and investing in critical infrastructure. We're generating power from all available resources to cover any increases in demand. And we're innovating to ensure you always have the energy you need. MidAmerican Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Iowa beats Grandview tonight 25-3 in the final non-conference midweek before we get into Big Ten play. Hawks head to Purdue now for a three-game series with the Boilermakers. Anthony Watts gets the midweek win, his first of the season. All right, John, I don't know where you want to start, but I'll let you start with your highlights, your, uh, your stars of the game. What stood out to you? Uh, one walk. I mean that to me is still the big one. You know, it, it's been the it's been the challenge for for Hawkeye pitching. Um, and, and again, say all you want about Grandview or whatever. It's a team that came in with an exceptional batting average. A team that knows the strike zone, knows how to put the ball in play if you make mistakes. Um, and, and Iowa pitching gave up some runs, but but really made Grandview earn those runs. Yeah. There weren't any. There weren't any cheap ones there, and so that that part was good. So that that to me is the the big thing is is one walk to fourteen strikeouts. Offensively, a lot of uh, multi hit games for the Hawks. Gable Mitchell, Andy Nelson, Kyle Huxdorf, each with four hits today. Raider Teller with three hits and six RBIs. I think we were giving him a little bit of a hard time. Uh, about his RBI numbers being a little bit lower than usual, but uh, the table was set for Raider awfully nice today. Well, yeah, you had uh, you had Nelson, except for when Nelson was clearing it up with the home run. You know, a lot of singles creating traffic. Sam Peterson, you know, a couple hits, uh, a walk, got hit by a pitch. So, again, every everything you want, um, top and bottom there. Uh, whether it was uh, whether it was hitting for some power, you know, just six extra base hits which I guess is kind of impressive, 19 singles, um, but, a, but a day that was hard to hit. Mm -hmm. you, know, you you couldn't sit there and try to hit balls over to Carver and give souvenirs to people walking in. You had to, you had to take what was there for you, and Hawkeyes did a nice job of that. All right, we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll, uh, we'll talk with associate head coach Marty Sutherland, who's on his way up to the press box. John, we'll see you on the bus ride or our car ride to uh, West Lafayette. Yeah. Let's rock and roll. Yeah, our bus ride, so... <laughs> All right, we'll see you soon. All right, we're back after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Nestled on the rolling greens of the iconic Finkbine Golf Course, Bump's Restaurant is open to the public year-round. Whether you're swinging by after a round of golf or just in the neighborhood, Bump's is your go-to spot for scrumptious sandwiches, shareable appetizers, and mouth-watering pizzas. Quench your thirst with our selection of local craft beers. Or let our full bar serve you a refreshing cocktail to toast to your game. Or just because it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Our happy hour from 2 to 6 p.m. is the perfect 19th hole. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to catch our latest daily specials. And here's a little insider secret just for our radio listeners. Thursdays are not to be missed at Bump's Restaurant. It's BOGO Happy Hour. Buy one, get one free on select beverages from our happy hour menu. Whether you're a diehard golfer or just love a great meal with a view, Bump's Restaurant at Finkbine Golf Course is your destination. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturday. Swing on by today. Bump's at Finkbine Golf Course. Great food, great drinks, and the best views in town. See you at Bump's. Iowa takes down Grandview this evening, 25-3 to in Iowa City. We're joined by associate head coach Marty Sutherland. Coach, congratulations on the win. I'll let you uh, I'll let you drive right off the rip here. What stood out to you the most today? Well, I think, you know, in these types of games, what you hope to do is get a bunch of guys in. You know you're going to do that on the mound, right? You know you're going to probably throw eight or nine different guys and um, try to get guys going and get some work in, and then you're hoping that you can get a bunch of guys at bats and, and you know, worked out that way. But... You know, I think it starts on the mound. I thought Anthony was really sharp his inning. And if you think about, I think everybody threw pretty dang well. I mean, Archer, you know, gives up the run, but it was a really good inning. He just couldn't put a couple guys away. And then, um, you know, we just make miss making a play out there in right center on the ball, on the on the triple. And 
and then the ball gets you know gets biased there for the extra base or, or for the free base that gives us gives them the run. I thought Chaz, you know, he gets gives us seeing eye single up that just kind of sneaks through, and then the kid gets one up in the wind. So outside of that, you know, just really good. Uh, you know, especially guys Detay Hackett. Um, guys looked really, really sharp. Buter looked really mm-hmm. sharp. Watts, um, but I thought overall, you know, we walk one guy, give four, punch out fourteen. I mean, that's a that's a pretty good day on the mound. And then offensively, you just see you know wild production everywhere, you know. And I think the one inning we had eight straight hits and and then a walk and then another hit. So I think it was like nine out of ten guys all got hits there in a row. And the the, the inning we scored fifteen, that was pretty crazy. But you know, Andy had a great great day uh, leading off, scores five runs, has four hits and a homer. PD and Raider, Raider knocks in six, you know, Huck, Gable, you know, guys just a ton of guys had had really good days and, and we got a lot of guys in there. You know, Ben Swales gets his first hit as a Hawk guy, I mm-hmm. think, um, which yes. is a pretty cool moment for him. And um, yeah, you just got everybody multiple at bats, I think, uh, which is which is the hope. And we play clean baseball, you know, we didn't make an error. So um, can't, can't draw it up a whole heck of a lot better than that. Uh, best midweek performance of the season uh, so far. And, and I guess you and the staff think that, okay, this is now we're cooking. We're on a four-game win streak. This is what it's supposed to look like, especially with the with the way the team's coming together. Yeah, I think we're certainly feeling a lot better about things. You know, you take the weekend, you know, especially out of the bullpen. We only walk, you know, two or three guys. You add in that, you know, with this group, you know, four, four walks out of 23 innings with that group, um, which is, hey, that's what we need to do. And you think about going into Big Ten play, specifically going over to West Lafayette, you look at the weather, not going to be a super offensive weather weekend. So, you know, we know what Purdue's good at. Purdue can run. Purdue's going to play the short game. You know, so far on the mound, they've really limited free bases. So you know, that's the stuff that need, That's the stuff that plays in that weather. So we're going to have to match that, um, you know, put ourselves in position to manufacture some runs, use our legs a little bit. Um, you know, so that's the type of weekend it's going in, you know, we're going into. So you think about kind of how we've been performing here lately, specifically on the mound, you know, outside of a blip, a couple blips here and there, you know, the free bases have come way down. I think we were under five today uh, total. Um, and we had gone a streak there where we were 12, 13, 14, 15, pretty much every game. And I don't think we went double digits one time against Western Illinois. We back it up with five here. And that that's championship level play. Once you start to limit those types of things and, and you force that other team to earn it, and then offensively, we're we're obviously in a really good place, and you know we've we've taken advantage of some some things that the other team's done, but but we've we've done it, you know. So that's the really good thing going into a weekend that um, you know Purdue's playing as well as anybody in our league. They're off to as good a start as anybody. I think they're like fifteen and six or something like that. Um, so we got our work cut out for us, and and again, the way the style they have to play, you got to play clean baseball. And if we don't do that, you know, it's going to be a pretty pretty uphill battle. Crucial to start uh, conference play on a on a high note. Go win that series, maybe get the sweep, and then you get a couple series at home and really build that momentum. Coach, looking forward to it. Absolutely, should be a lot of fun. And and you know, you think of it, you know, let's be honest. This this the start of the season hasn't gone probably you know the way we thought it would or wanted it to. But everybody kind of gets a clean slate here as you as you work into work into conference play and guys that maybe haven't gotten off the starts they wanted to. It's just take a deep breath. It's all new, and you know that's kind of the mindset we'll take into the weekend. And um, yeah, we're, we're excited to go. We'll have a good practice tomorrow, and then head over head over on Thursday and and let's let's get after it. Sounds great. Let's take it to the boilers. Thanks, Marty. Thanks, Associate head coach Marty Sutherland on our post game show from Banks today. All right, we're back with highlights right after this. This is Hawkeye Baseball from Learfield. Hi, Chef Grunder. Let's dive right into the machine shed. Fridays here mean all you care to have fried or broiled North Atlantic cod. Or try our bone-in seasoned catfish, lightly fried. More of a salmon lover? Choose between the machine shed's white wine sauce or apple bourbon glaze. Our sautéed savory shrimp will satisfy your taste buds with Old Bay seasoning and Asiago cheese. Join us this Friday for seafood worth savoring at the shed. Iowa 80 and Hickman Road, Urbandale, and Iowa 80 Northwest Boulevard, Davenport. Hi, I'm Gary Dolphin, and if you want your home to be exceptionally comfortable during these cold Iowa winters and hot, humid summers, you need to turn to Dave Lennox and your local Lennox Home Comfort Specialist. Lennox has been serving Iowa consumers since 1895, when Dave Lennox built his first furnace in Marshalltown, and Lennox is still building its high-efficiency furnaces and air conditioners there today. For the best home comfort system you can buy, it's Lennox and your local Lennox dealer. Lennox and the Hawkeyes. Now there's a winning combination.
Iowa now on a four-game win streak heading into conference play. Matchup with Purdue coming up this weekend, knocking off Grandview today 25-3. to Let's relive some of the highlights from today's game. Line drive, base hit into right for Gable Mitchell. Michael Seegers comes down the line. He'll score 3-1 to Hawks. 2-2, line drive into right center. It's going to tail away from the center fielder and get all the way to the wall. Here comes Mitchell. He'll jog home. We're waving Andy Nelson. Here's Andy around third. He'll score. Two RBI double. Raider Tello. He continues to stay hot for the black and gold. Two balls, two strikes, one out for Seegers. Looking to swing the bat. Huxdorf at second base. 5-1 Iowa in the third. Huxdorf takes off for third. It's hit on the ground right to Huck at third. He jumps over the ball and gets into left. Huck's going to score after all that. He hurdled the baseball as it was going into left on a chopper from Seegers. 6-1 Hawks. Nelson drives this in the air, deep to right center. It's carrying well. Get going, baby. It is gone. Andy Nelson over the right center field wall. Boom. 3-2. Ground ball off the pitcher and through into center field. Stromar being waved. He'll score. It's 9-3. One ball, no strikes to Moore. Rip to the second baseman and threw into right field. Oh, I thought he picked it off the turf. He didn't. Here comes Nelson. He scores. Now we'll have a play at the plate. Peterson is safe. Moore will sprint to second. And a couple runs score for the Hawkeyes. Now 12-3. to this is Davis Kopp. He swings at the first pitch. Deep drive to center. Center fielder Heinen going back, spinning, turning, and it is gone. Davis Kopp notify the authorities. Two-run bomb. 15-3, Hawks. An offensive explosion tonight followed up with really strong pitching for the Hawkeyes out of the bullpen this evening. 25 to 3, Iowa wins it. That'll do it for our coverage of Hawkeye Baseball today. John and I will talk to you from West Lafayette, Indiana. Conference play around the corner on Friday. The series starts with Purdue. First pitch is at 3 p.m. Central Time. John and I take to the air at 2.30. Looking forward to talking to you from the state of Indiana, Iowa, and Purdue for three games this weekend. All right, for my great board op down the line, Michael. Excellent job today, Michael. Great to hear you down the line. My broadcast partner, John Evans. I'm John Leo saying so long from Banks this afternoon. Iowa 25, Grandview 3. We'll talk to you Friday afternoon at Purdue. Every day is a great day to be a Hawkeye. Some are just a little bit better than others. So long, everybody. Hawkeye Baseball has been brought to you by High V. Score big savings with a new High V Perks membership. University of Iowa Healthcare. Changing medicine, changing lives. Oak Knoll Retirement Community. Homewood Suites and Home 2. Hawk fans, experience your home away from home at Coralville's finest all sweet hotels. Iowa Corn. You might think Iowa just grows corn, but the truth is, corn grows Iowa. Brought to you by Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and the Iowa Corn Promotion Board. Also brought to you by Mediacom, home of extreme and one gig internet speeds. Wimmer's Meats, the official hot dog of the Hawkeyes. Travel Leaders, Destinations Unlimited, the official travel partner of the Hawkeyes. And by Bud and Mary's. There's no THC cap on Iowa medical cannabis, and getting a card is fast and easy online. Get your medical card today. Visit BudMary.com. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeye Sports Network.